Hey everyone, this is Too Big Kim from Too Big Women on a Couch.com. That's that social networking website that I know all of you are enjoying putting your videos on, blogging and all. And as you know, uh, we are uh, upgrading that website. And so we hope that everyone will come over and give some support to that. Generally, I'm on the couch with my good friend Terry, and we're doing lots of discussions around various topics. And sometimes you'll find me by myself on the rocking chair, people that I've met on YouTube, some really wonderful folks on YouTube, and talking about a variety of topics. I happened to meet John very recently, uh, and his uh, YouTube uh, username is Fitness Nomad. So we definitely want you to go check out his website. When I checked it, I was very impressed with the cooking things that were going on there and, and a lot of things that he's got there. So please go check out Fitness Nomad on the YouTube. Now John has agreed actually to spend some time with me talking about, well actually over time a variety of subjects, but today we're going to talk about how to simplify your life. Uh, John can tell a little bit about his background because I know he's a fitness guru and uh, a couple of other things that he does. So we'll get, John, have you give a brief introduction of yourself and then we're going to talk about how to simplify your life. So thanks for being with me. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to be here, Kim. Thanks to all of you for watching. I have been, I'm a personal trainer, fitness coach, writer, and entrepreneur, and I've been in the fitness industry now for about 17 years. I've had a, I have a pretty diverse background. I've worked with cancer patients, heart disease patients, diabetes, so I spent a lot of time in the clinical arena, and I've always worked along the way with private clients, and now I have my own fitness studio here in Madison and Middleton, Wisconsin. I have about 50 clients. We do one-on-one -on -one training, small group training, and boot camps. And my mission really is, the way I see my job, is to inspire you to take better care of yourself, to live a healthier, more balanced life. The tagline underneath my logo is live better and be healthier. And so I'm really just working at all times to see what I can do to help people do that. Well, thank you for, for doing this with us. You know, our... Uh... Our concern is that we are able to um, to sort of share really good information uh, for folks who want to know how to do exactly what you have to offer. How to I, I thought, well, I should comment too first, and I've worked with cancer patients, heart disease patients in the past, and, and you mentioned that, you know, what you're going through, you know, sometimes that's a really good opportunity to kind of take stock of what's going on in your life and, and an opportunity to grow and learn and become an even better human being. A lot of the people that I work with in the, in the cancer research programs that I work with really said that, you know, they weren't necessarily glad they have cancer, but that it was a real life-changing thing for them. So Absolutely. keep up the good work and taking care of yourself. You're doing a good job. I wanted to start today with a quote. I thought this quote was... was uh, that would speak to the people on your site and, and in this network, and it is this. Because what we're talking about today is how to simplify your life. I'm going through that personally, and I'm doing a lot of work with my clients on that. Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. And when you realize that there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Wow. Wow. So really take stock of, of, and, and be appreciative of what you, what you already have. And, right. uh, I think we all kind of get into a mode. I know this is true for me personally. You know, one of the things that makes me a great coach is that I spend a lot of time reflecting and learning from my own personal experience and then sharing that with, mm -hmm. with the people I come into contact with. For the last four years, I've been overstriving, trying to accomplish more than maybe is really possible. And when you're doing that and when you're not just in the moment and mindful and taking stock of what you have, it can cause a lot of suffering and frustration and anger and anxiety. And so I kind of developed this topic about a month ago when I found this really great book, which I'll share with everybody in a minute, but this topic of, of how to simplify your life. And it really actually comes down to two very simple things. There's, there's only two steps to this. That's how simple it is to simplify your life. Wow. Wow. And we you make know. it all so complicated. Uh, so, you know, that's what we all are so looking forward to. How do we get through it? Because we think it's so cumbersome and all. So I'm looking forward to hearing these two steps. All right. So identify what's most important to you and eliminate everything else. Wow. Okay. That's when it all comes down to it, that's really what you're trying to do is identify what's most important to you and try to cultivate more of that in your life and then eliminate everything else that's not serving that, that ultimate purpose. And the book I'm referring to, I don't know if I hold it up if everybody can see it, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll put a, blo a blog post up onto my blog as well 
Zen Habits. It's written by a guy, a guy by the name of Leo Babauta. And it is a terrific book. It really, he talks about the simplification concepts, but he also talks about a lot of other things about just creating a Zen-like environment everywhere in your life. And he's got a list in here of 35, no, 72 simplicity tips. And I'll just touch on a few of those today, but okay. I'll stop talking for a moment, Kim, and let you comment on some of that if you want. Well, I, well, I, well first of all, I appreciate that you're bringing resources that we can actually uh, go and get and, and refer to. So that's beautiful. Now, tell us again the two things. It sounded almost too simple. The two things we, we need to do, again, just to underscore that. Identify what's the most important to you. And eliminate everything else. It just sounds so simple, but so it can't be that simple because now I need to know how do you identify? Can you share with us how does one go about identifying what's most important to them? Because you know, sure. some folks look like some folks have children, they have pets, they have jobs, they have spouses or partners, they have a world of things that are actually on their shoulder. And within each of those categories, there's just so much that they have to do for all of those kinds of things. So how do they how do they get down to what's most important? Well, I think this is where a good mindfulness practice, day-to-day, -day, sitting quietly, you don't have to meditate, you don't have to do um, you know, meditation if you don't want to, but just really sitting quietly every day and, and, and actually doing some writing by hand, long hand, mm -hmm. just start making a list. If I had to make a list today, if I, if I said, okay, Kim, sit down today and just write me a handwritten list of all of the things that are important to you in order without thinking about it. Just do it. And actually, you started with family, friends, work. You know, usually, it's, it's kind of what I tell people around exercise. You know, until you make your exercise a top four priority in your life, it's going to be difficult to make sure and fit it in. Right. And so this is the same process. So, so for personally, what I have done, my family, my kids, and my wife, that's the top priority for me. And then, of course, I have to go to work and I have to make a living. Now, within that, though, this is a good example. Because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a creative guy, or at least I think I'm pretty creative, I have lots of great ideas and I want to follow all of them. So what I've done instead is say, you know what? I've got to just focus on my studio and the work with my clients, and that's it. And the beauty of it is, and this was my challenge for everybody today, is pick one thing in your life today that you're just going to stop working on. You're going to get rid of it because it's not working or you don't have time for it. That's my challenge to you. Everybody always has one thing, as difficult as that may seem. And when you do that, when you start eliminate, eliminating things, you'll be surprised at how easily new and better things come your way. Okay. And there's a really, really important concept here, which I think will maybe answer your question even better. Thinking about it in a way of space versus time. So we're all time crunched and we never have enough time mm -hmm. and we're always running out of time. But when you create more space in your life, you'll have plenty of time. So if you work first on where can I create more space in my life, and sometimes that's just decluttering a corner of your house that's been bothering you, you will create more time as a result of that. Does that make sense? It does. It does. It does. And, and what I'm hearing you say also is that what I heard you loud and clearly say is that if it's not working, you know, that's something that you can think about or try to eliminate. Um, and I think for me, there are a lot of things that you, you continue to, uh, for me, I, I keep working on thinking it's going to work. I'm going to make this work. So I spend a lot of energy, you know, trying to do that. So that's a really good lesson for me is like, wait a minute, it's not working. Let me just at least put it to the side for a while and, 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 and do the things that are working. So I thought that was really an important uh, note. So it's just important to remember you're already good enough. You already have more than enough, and you're already perfect. I mean, I think that's another thing that, that Leo talks about in his book, the Zen Habits book, a lot. You know, we live today like the rich and famous lived 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. We forget how much we have, and, and we're in this culture where we're always creating more things and cooler gadgets and all this stuff. And it's fun to get caught up in that to an extent, but it also is important to make sure you're taking stock, again, of... You know, you have everything you need in life, and the more you connect with that, the more fulfilled you'll feel, regardless of all of these other external things. I think that makes a lot of sense, John. It really does. It, it is. It's uh, often, you know, we find ourselves, you know, 
we need the new gadget, we need the new this, we've got to stay up with that. And sometimes people, it gets really bad for some people because they can't afford it, that they can't afford either to be able to get those things or the time uh, to be able to really use them. I've got a closet full of gadgets. It's actually pretty funny because uh, I used to be like that. I had to have the latest, the greatest. And I did simplify my life. Just to love uh, everything that you're talking about. So remember, my challenge to everybody out there right now is find one thing that you can let go of. So one thing, one project, one role you're playing, one job you have, what could be anything. And it doesn't have to be huge. It could be small. But one thing that today you're going to let go of. And it might just be letting go of it for now and coming back to it later. But one thing you're going to let go of. And, just, and to remember that as, as corny as it might sound, you can say this to yourself on a daily basis. You're already good enough. You already have more than enough. Mm -hmm. And you're already perfect. Wow. Wow. Awesome concept, John. I am so grateful that, that we connected uh, and that you wanted to keep with, connect with our audience. Uh, and I think folks are really going to enjoy uh, hearing how to simplify their life and the how simple it is, the, the two tips right, right that you've given us today. So uh, thank you very much. Um, is there any last minute wrap up that you want to say? We'll call it after that. Well, I'd say just to remind people what those two things are that you just mentioned. Identify what's most important to you and eliminate everything else. It really is that simple. It almost sounds too simple, but I know it works. I've done it myself. So thank you, John, for being here. Really appreciate you. You're welcome. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely.